So guys, welcome to your 16th 3D Studio Max tutorial, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you what all this other stuff means in the uh, Material Options Editor right here. And also, I'm going to be going over maps a little bit. So let's go ahead and create a sphere, first of all. Uh, just create it, then I'm just going to move it and drag it up above the plane right there. And let's go ahead and add some material to this. So go ahead and bring up uh, your material editor by pressing M on your keyboard and your material editor will pop up. Now let's go over the rest of these parameters right here. We went over pretty much everything above the shader basic parameters. What a shader is, is it pretty much um, each of these shaders is an algorithm to give a different appearance. Blend is default and I'm not really going to be going over the other one these uh, right now because they're kind of confusing and we don't really need to for anything so just stick with blend for now uh, the wire right here is just an appearance of your preview if you can look up here the wire two-sided means you can see the front and back of it um, faceted if you uncheck these it's like a little textured kinda but just leave all of those unchecked uh, pretty much you don't want to touch this ever but I had to tell you what it was but what you do want to concentrate on is the blend basic parameters. Um, these are the colors, the main colors, just the ambient, diffuse, and specular. You can also lock them so once you change one color, right here, if everything's locked together, you change them all at once. So that pretty much is what that does. Self illumination is um, if you want the object to illuminate itself. And what this does is pretty much get rid of all the shadows. So if you change it to yellow or something, you see that all the shadows are gone. Shadows before, not anymore. But uh, we'll be working with that later. I'll leave it unchecked for now. The opacity of an object is just that. So if we go ahead and let's go ahead and make another object, and I'll show you the opacity. Create like a a box or something behind it. Change it to green or something. And if I change the opacity, actually let me move this a little bit. Let me move this so it's right about there. Now I can show you the opacity. If I change the opacity of the sphere, it's going to be able to see through to the box. So go ahead and take this opacity slider and slide it down to like 50, somewhere around 50. Then go ahead and render it out by pressing this button, Render Production. And now you can see that my box and my um, sphere isn't lined up at all. And that's because this view wasn't selected which is embarrassing so now let's render that again and I didn't apply that so there we go one last time show me the money right there no whammy so whenever you lower the opacity you need just to lower it to your desired opacity then of course apply it to your object by clicking it or dragging or pressing this which I didn't do last time that why it wasn't showing up and then when you render it out bam look at that opacity is pretty much see-through so now let's go ahead and raise that to opacity 100 so it's totally opaque and apply it again. And now I can talk about, actually get rid of this cube too. And now I can talk about the specular highlights. The specular highlights are pretty much the brightnesses, the brightness or the shininess of your object. So everything's pretty much set pretty low by default. So let me go ahead and talk you guys through what each one of these means. The specular level is how bright something is. So let's go ahead and raise this a little bit. And as you can see, the hot spots on it are getting brighter and brighter. So now we have a little bit of shine right here. The glossiness, actually, let's go ahead and blow that out totally. The glossiness is how big that is. So if we narrowed it right here, you can see it's only a little pinpoint or only a little bit of shine. If we took it and drag it out like this, we'd have a big old glare on it like that. So again, the intensity, the size, and soften, is pr you probably don't want to use this a lot. It pretty much spreads the highlight. Um, uh, it pretty much has to do with putting the highlight uh, across the area that you define it glossiness. So again, forget to ever say that. Don't ever touch soften unless I tell you to, and I didn't tell you to. So now when you render this out, we get a nice little shine on our object as well. So I guess aside from opacity, I guess we can just move to maps right now. So what a map is, 
uh, like I said before, pretty much something cool, like, um, it's pretty much like putting a sticker on your object and making it do something, even like putting a label on it and, actually, I'm just going to show you something real quick with maps real quick, so go ahead and delete this, and let's go ahead and make a plane by clicking plane in your front view, looks pretty good right there, uh, we probably want to rotate it, so click rotate like that and then we want to move it using select and move move it right there so we get some kind of plane like that now let's switch views to maximize toggle viewport and create a sphere right here and actually don't want that blue I want that like pink or something and let's go ahead and move this up by clicking your left view or something and moving it not, not you hoss this one right here so get something like this um, just by creating two different objects and go to your click this maximize viewport and go ahead and bring up uh, your material editor and let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit bam looking good now I'm gonna show you guys um, some real cool map real quick so in your second um, preview go ahead and click this and you can rename it if you want I'm not gonna go ahead and expand maps and then in your let's see reflection map we're gonna wanna click this and we're gonna wanna double click flat mirror and what this is gonna do is give us a mirrored map now I'm gonna make this plane turn into a mirror and I'm gonna reflect this ball so I'm not gonna want blur so uncheck blur and then I'm also gonna uncheck use environment map because I don't wanna do that and I want to apply it to faces with ID 1 which is this so now once we got that map all set we can go ahead and drag it select that and drag it on our selected item now you can see that this ball doesn't reflect on this plane even though we just told it to that's because it doesn't show up till we render and that's just to save our computer memory from having to work with every single map in real time so if we go ahead and render that out we can see that this ball does indeed reflect on this map right here so that's a I know I got I went through that real quick and I didn't really tell you guys how to use maps but I figured it would be easier just to show you guys what a map was so that way when I'm talking about it you guys will actually know what I mean and another cool thing you can do with map is like I can take a picture of my face and I can apply it to here instead of adding a reflection reflection map but again, like I said, I just want to show you guys uh, real quick what maps did. So then when I'm talking about it, you're like, all right, what the heck are you talking about? So in the next tutorial, I'm going to be going over all the stuff I did with maps and showing you how to edit them and make them sweet and a lot better. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next tutorial.